In this video, we're going to be looking at the weight. Now, the weight of an object is dependent on the gravitation acceleration due to gravity on a particular planet. So on Earth here, uh, g is approximately equal to 10. So your weight is equal to mg. So it's, your weight is going to be 10 times your mass. And your mass is in kilograms. The weight always acts straight down to the center of the Earth. So your weight would change if you went to the moon, for example. Your weight would be different if you're on the moon. Uh, than you, on, if you're on the Earth, but your mass would be the same. Your weight, technically, your weight is in newtons. It is a force. So we're going to be looking at a couple of examples here. And it says the weight, uh, to the, find the weight to the nearest newton of, a per, of an 80 kilogram person on a planetary object where g has a value of, and the first one is g is equal to 10, so this is on Earth. So we we'll just say mg, that's where your weight is, is just going to be 80 times 10, which is just going to be 800 newtons. So on Earth, this person has a weight of 800 newtons. On Venus, uh, the g is then a wee bit less, so it's going to be 80 times 8.87. And if you do 80 times 8.87, you'll have 709.6 uh, newtons. On Jupiter, the g is an awful lot more, so it's going to be 80 times 24.79 and if you do that out you're going to get 1983.2 newtons and on the moon so this is our moon lots of moons but this is our moon we're talking about g is 1.62 and then that is going to be 129.6 newtons so if you are the heaviest place you could be would be jupiter uh, out of these four places, the lightest place would be uh, the Moon, and then the Earth and the Venus are somewhere in between. Okay, next example says, an m kilogram mass is dropped 1.2 meters above the ground. At what speed does a mass hit the ground? So, uh, in this one, this confuses people with a question, I guess, but really, the mass is irrelevant oops the mass is irrelevant so here so here your a is just equal to 10 meters per second squared uh, downwards okay so why the mass is irrelevant it doesn't matter if you drop something which is 10 kilograms or a thousand kilograms uh, as far as we're concerned in these questions uh, there's no other uh, resistive forces so that means uh, there's no air resistance and so on so uh, the acceleration uh, due to gravity, it's just going to be the same no matter what you drop. So we're just going to say, are you, if something is dropped, are you zero downwards? Our A is 10 downwards. Uh, our S is equal to 1.2 downwards. And what we're looking for is the speed. I'll squeeze that on. We're looking for our velocity then that it hits the ground. So we're going to be using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, which means V squared is equal to zero plus 2 times 10 times 1.2, which gives you v squared is equal to 24, which means your v is equal to the square root of 24, which is going to be 4 point something, 4 point, and it's 4.90 meters per second to two decimal places. And that's it. Next uh, example says, a 40 kilogram box is lifted using a rope up the side of a building. The tension in the rope is 470 newtons. Find the acceleration of the box up the side of the building. So, uh, on this one, just do a diagram. So your diagram, just do a box, and that was 40 kilograms. So just always label the mass. You've got your rope. Your tension is just the force in a rope or a cable or whatever. So when a rope or cable is pulled taut, that word taut is T-A-U-T, -T, so that just means pull tight. Uh, if a rope or a cable is pulled tight, uh, then there is tension in it. And if a rope is or a cable is lying slack, there is no tension in it. There's no force in it. But if you pull a rope tight, there must be a force in it. So tension is a force that's pulling this uh, box up. You, what you've got down is not just the 40. You've got 40 G, and then that's going to be Newton. So you've got the weight is a force going down. So it says find acceleration. So what we need to find is this. Uh, if the tension is, so they've told us the tension in this question, the tension is 470 newtons. So I'm going to resolve 
vertically. <coughs> so that means taking everything going uh, vertically up as positive, and I'm going to use F equals MA. So going up, I've got 470. Going down, I've got 40G, and that's equal to my mass, which is 40 times my acceleration, A. So remember, your G is equal to 10, so 40 times G is 40 times 10, so 400. So that's what you've got. So we have 70 is equal to 40A, which means A is equal to 70 divided by 40, which is going to be 1.75 meters per second squared. Our last example for this video has three parts to it. Part one, first of all, it says a stone of mass 300 grams, not kilograms, 300 grams, is released from rest on the surface of the water in a well. The water exerts a constant resistance of 2.5 newtons on the stone. Show that the acceleration of the stone is 5 over 3 meters per second squared. Okay, first thing we want to do is we diagram. I am just going to do my stone. It is as we round circle, and that is... Uh, did a bigger round circle. I'm just going to say 0.3 kilograms. That's the mass of it. Okay, it's going downwards. There's a constant resistance of 2.5, so 2.5 is going upwards. And what you have going downwards is the weight of the stone. Sorry, that's not very clear. That 2.5. Uh, so you've got 2.5 newtons going upwards. That's your resistance. And you've got 0.3 g newtons, that's the weight of the stone going down. And what you've got to find is the acceleration. It says, show that the acceleration is 5, 5 over 3 meters per second squared. What that means is you've got to work to, basically you've got to find the acceleration and show that your answer matches up to 5 over 3. The only reason I set the question out this way is so that then you know in the next part 2 and part 3, you know that the acceleration is 5 over 3, so you're, if you if you've got that wrong in the first part, you know to adjust and just give your uh, A is 5 over 3, so you're able to do the rest of the question. Okay, I'm going to resolve uh, vertically downwards, and I'm going to use force is equal to mass times acceleration. So going downwards, I have 0.3 G. Going upwards, against that, I have the 2.5, and that's equal to my mass, which is 0.3 times my acceleration. So 0.3 times the G is 0.3 times 10, which is just going to be 3 minus 2.5 is equal to 0.3A, which is 0.5 is equal to 0.3A, which means then 0.5 divided by 0.3 is equal to your A, which means your A is equal to, and top and bottom of those that fraction could be multiplied by 10 to give you 5 over 3 meters per second squared, as required. So, lovely question. You know you've got the full marks. You know you've got it right. Okay, next part of the question says uh, the stone takes the stone takes um, 4.2 seconds to reach the bottom of the well. Calculate the speed with which the stone hits the bottom of the well. So, uh, what we know, if it's dropped, your initial velocity is zero. Your acceleration, we know, is 5 over 3. We also know in this question your time. They've just I've just got rid of that on the screen, unfortunately. But your time was 4.3, and what you've got to find is your v. So we're going to use v is equal to u plus a t, and then just go with this and see what we get. So v is equal to u plus a t. So it's v is equal to zero plus five over three times your t, which is 4.3. So your v works out to be Whatever it works out to be, I haven't actually written down my notes. It's going to be 5 divided by 3, then times 4.3. And that gives me, I'll give a perfect answer as of 7 and 1 sixth meters per second. Okay, part 3 of that question. I need to go back up and look at part 3. Part 3 says, calculate the depth of the well. So we know lots of stuff already. We know your u is equal to 0. You know, your A is 5 over 3. You know, your T was 4.3. And what you want to find is the depth of the well. So that's distance. So that's our displacement, really. So that's what we're trying to find. So you're going to use S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. So your S is equal to 0. Uh, U is 0. So U times anything is going to be 0 times anything is going to be 0. Plus a half times my A, which is 
5 over 3 times my t, which is 4.3 squared. And I'm just going to work across the page and say that is 14.7 meters. And that is it. Okay, so we'll just zoom out so we can see that question in its entirety. And there you go, you can see the whole question. Uh, and that's it all. Okay, that is the end of this video.